the grace and mercy and peace to you from God the Father, from God the Son, and from God the Holy Spirit. We've been, as a church, on a journey this Lent in our Wednesday evening services called, the series was called, Restore the Roar. And this series actually started last Advent, before Christmas, as we looked ahead to the birth of the Messiah. And then we picked it up again and continued in Lent as we looked ahead to the death of that Messiah. The series started with what we called the pleading roar on Ash Wednesday, when we looked at the prophet Joel and talked about how God pleads with us to return to him. Then we looked at the redeeming roar in Ruth, saw how Jesus is our kinsman redeemer. After that was the living roar, when Jesus cried out, to the crowds on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles when everybody was gathered at the temple in a huge celebration, the climax of the ceremony, when Jesus called out, If anybody's thirsty, let them come to me and drink. Streams of living water will flow. We then looked at the crying roar, and we watched rather than read our gospel reading, and we saw Jesus breaking down and crying over the lost state of the Pharisees and the teachers. Two weeks ago was the serving roar, and we talked about Jesus washing the feet of the disciples, and we said that that roar really was sounded in the action of Jesus washing the disciples' feet, and that roar continues with us whenever we serve someone in Jesus' name. Then finally, last week, we looked at the misunderstood roar, and we saw that even those closest to Jesus could not understand who he was and what he was all about. Tonight, Maundy Thursday, the Restore the Roar theme tonight is the Hungry Roar. On this night, we remember the Last Supper. The Last Supper of Jesus as he spent his last day, or his last night of his earthly life in freedom with his disciples, with his closest friends. When we read through the Gospel reading tonight, there are so many things in there. So many things to look at and to discern. But I'd like to just look at two of them, just two of them tonight, because they make a huge difference in what we're all about and why we're even gathered this evening. The first thing is this. Our Gospel reading said that Jesus told Peter and John to go and make preparations for him to eat the Passover with them, with the inner 12 disciples. Now that may seem innocent enough, that may not seem like a whole lot on the surface, but there's something else going on there that we might not recognize at first. Passover was the, and is, the big holiday, the big celebration in the Jewish religion. This was a major thing that Jesus was saying. This would be like me coming to you and saying, go make reservations so I can eat Christmas Day dinner with you instead of you eating it with your family and me eating it with mine. That's the equivalent of what Jesus was saying here. He loved these 12 disciples. He loved them so much he spent a major holiday with them instead of his own mother and brothers. And the disciples loved Jesus so much they did the same. They spent the holiday with him rather than their own families. Can you imagine Peter? We know that Peter was married. We know that he lived with his mother-in-law, his wife and his mother-in-law. Can you imagine Peter going to his wife and his mother-in-law and saying, I'm not going to spend this major holiday with you. Instead, I'm going to spend it with Jesus and my 11 closest friends. Imagine the shock there. Jesus loved them. And he loves you too. And each one of these disciples, just like each one of us, came with some baggage. Peter had chronic foot and mouth syndrome. Every time the man opened his mouth, he seemed to stick his foot in it. John and his brother James had short fuses. Jesus gave them the nickname Boanerges, I mean sons of thunder. Apparently they had a temper about that quick that would go off. Matthew, his career was stealing from his own people. He never seemed to be able to forgive himself. Thomas, he didn't know what he believed. Doubting Thomas. He had no idea what he believed. He wasn't even sure if Jesus really was who he said he was. And Nathaniel was prejudiced against 
Jesus because of the town that Jesus grew up in. What, can anything good come out of Nazareth? That's what Nathaniel said about Jesus. And the list just goes on and on and on. And there in the middle of all that sat Judas. Now reading tonight, Jesus says, starting with verse 15, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. The hungry roar. Hunger not in a physical sense, but hunger in a spiritual sense. Hunger to be with those that he loved the most and eager to have a new meal with them. Hunger in the sense of desiring something new, something more for them. And so the lion of the tribe of Judah lets out a brand new roar. This is my body. This is my blood. This is the cup of the new covenant. It's poured out for you. And that roar continues. When we come into the presence of the Lord tonight, when we gather at this altar, we participate in the meal that he has given us. It's the act of, of Jesus, our gracious host, who comes to us and serves us himself. When you think of the words of institution, this is my body, this is my blood. They're given for the remission of sins. This meal tonight is one that, that, that should, just should break our hearts with the acknowledgement and understanding of our sin, and it should break our hearts with joy over the mercy and grace that we've been given and the forgiveness we have and that we've been set free. And when Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me, that word remembrance is extremely important. Because when translated from the original Greek, it means so much more than in memory of. This is the second thing in our reading tonight. It's really important. Please, please hear this. Please, confidence, hear this tonight before you take communion for the first time. Please. In the original Greek, this word, remembrance, do this in remembrance, carries with it the idea of a present participation in an event that has started in the past and is still going on. We are participating in an event that has already happened in the past, but is continuing. Think of it like a, like a baseball game. There's a baseball game already going on, and, and you show up and you start playing. The, the game didn't start when you showed up. It was already going on. You're joining in the game that's already going on, and then continues after you've joined in. Participation in a past event that has already been going on and continues going on. This is what Jesus is saying in the Greek. In other words, the hungry roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah continues. It's still going on. It's happening here again tonight. So given that, communion is not a meal to remember Jesus. It's a meal to participate in with Jesus. This isn't some magical experience produced by the bread and the wine. It's a spiritual experience that comes through our understanding and our meaning of the supper. And it's so important that the Holy Spirit actually gives us warning. He warns us about not understanding what's happening here tonight. He warns us about misunderstanding what Jesus did. This is what he says in 1 Corinthians 11. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. And how, why are we guilty of sitting against the body and blood? Because it's right there. The body and blood is right there. This is my body. This is my blood. A man ought to examine himself before he eats the bread and drinks the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment or condemnation on himself. When we recognize the Lord Jesus' body and blood, we recognize what's happening here. Participation in an ongoing event. Confess our sins, repent of them, we're forgiven. And we walk away from this meal tonight changed. We're not the same person that we were when we came up here. Those old sins, those old things that we cling to, cannot coexist with the new life in Jesus. 1 Corinthians 10 says this, You cannot drink 
the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and in the table of demons. The roar continues, that hungry roar continues, that desire for something deeper, a deeper connection, a deeper relationship. The roar continues. If the food at the table is Jesus' body and blood, then what's the food at the table of demons? It would be not recognizing Jesus' body and blood, not confessing, not repenting, not desiring to be changed, not wanting to walk away, to stop committing those sins that we do over and over and over again that God has told us not to do. It would be arguing with God. I know what you say in your word, God, but here's what I think. The Lord's Supper is not a little thing. It's not something to be taken lightly. It's something to be taken seriously, joyfully, and respectfully. This is the hungry roar. The roar of something deeper and more fulfilling spiritually continues tonight. And it's what we have been invited by Jesus to participate in. So here we are. Tonight's the night. Tonight we gather to celebrate the Lord's Supper the night that the Lord's Supper was instituted, and were invited by Jesus to participate in it with him once again. It's the night that we gather at this altar and receive the life-changing, sin-forgiving meal of Jesus. It's a night to rejoice in what Jesus has done for us and what he brings to us in a simple yet very profound way. He shows us his love when he comes to us in the body and in the blood and the bread and in the wine. That night, the disciples found out that the Passover meal they had eaten their entire lives took on a whole new meaning as Jesus instituted this new covenant that would continue through the ages. Again, Jesus invites us to join with him in that meal. So I pray for all of us that this meal take on a whole new depth of meaning for us tonight, a whole new joy for us tonight. As we gather up here at the altar and, and we hear the echo of that roar still going on. Will you pray with me, please? Lord Jesus, tonight we come very boldly to the altar to receive your supper at your invitation. We receive it tonight not in remembrance of a past event, but we receive it tonight in participation of an ongoing feast with you. We come tonight and trust, trust that you are here, and trust that you will forgive. Holy Spirit, we need to be changed. We need to stop arguing with you, arguing against your word in favor of our opinions. We need to be made new. We need you to take our baggage. Let us be done with it. It's held on to us for too long. We can't get rid of it on our own. Take it, take us, and refresh us in this meal again tonight. Lord Jesus, thank you for the supper. Thank you for loving us so much that you come to us in such a simple and wonderful way. Bless all of our hearts as we join around your table tonight to give you our sins and to be washed clean and set right again with our Heavenly Father to walk away different from this altar than we were when we approached it. It's in your name we pray it, Jesus. Amen. <laughs>